ladies and gentlemen. Quiet, please. A queenie wishle a chorja, fir queen falta roy per fad, o cod an an alienta a tronon an shop agus esbrayam the wish of her father and shop. This is a very informal occasion, but it's marking a major event, really. Uh, a combination of two of our great artists, one with the pen and the other with the bronze, or in this case, the brush, and to produce what I have to say is, as a bookseller, a real work of art. The production is just superb. So it's very informal. Uh, I don't have to introduce you to John Bean or to Jerry Dawn, but both of them are going to speak a little. So, starting with John. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, I've mentioned before that Gettysburg Address was two and a half minutes. So I, I, I'm going to try and break that record. <laughs> Myself and Jerry Daw have been <coughs> collaborators in art for many years, over 40 years, I would say. And uh, the um, poet and the visual artist have often cooperated uh, Sometimes not very successfully, but I think in this case, I, we both came together in a catharsis, and it just works for me anyway. And uh, the basis of poetry and the visual arts, painting in particular, is a long um, developed collaboration between the visual and the spoken word, or in the written word. And uh, if you think of uh, Picasso, all his best friends were poets. So this has always been an occasion of uh, a, a very happy kind of collusion between one art form and another, and respect each for the other. Um, and in modern days, we think of uh, Ted Hughes and Leonard Baskin as exemplars of that form. When the bonding of two artists' <coughs> forms collide, or collude, I mean, successfully, a form of perfection is created that is unique. It is always a catharsis when true minds meet and a satisfaction beyond words. And you think going back into the 19th century, probably the great collaboration there was uh, between Cervantes, who was a dead artist, and Daumier. I mean, that is one of the great examples of collusion between the visual and the written art. And with that, I just welcome you all here this evening. I, I see my great friends here and people I admire and love, and thank you for coming along. Thank you very much. Um, I'm like the uh, boxer. Uh, you know, they used to be with uh, Eastwood. Thank you very, very much, Mr. <laughs> uh, but uh, th there are several thank yous that I want to uh, mark uh, from, from the beginning. I want to thank John, uh, first of all. Um, John responded straight away to the spirit of Revenant. You, uh, you'll see the images behind me, which he was working on. I mean, it was just extraordinary to see that he had picked the essence of what I was trying to do. And I didn't know it, but he did. Um, he got the spirit of Revenant with uh, full-hearted support. There was never any messing around. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll do it. And as I started to see the bits and pieces coming together, then they had emerged in these wonderful images. Nothing to do with me at all. All his work. Um, they're stunning. Uh, uh, it, it struck me that uh, as I saw them developing, uh, he had caught the kind of uh, 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 almost kind of uh, shimmering quality of the poems, uh, and he had made them real. Um, wonderful, wonderful uh, work. Um, and in to be quite simple, Revenant, we wouldn't be here without John. It's, uh, it, uh, it happened uh, because of him. 
I want to thank Dorothea, uh, Dorothea Melvin uh, and Alwyn Daw, our daughter. A million thanks for the support throughout the two years when Revenant was on again, off again, on again, off again, as we all had that uh, because of the, uh, uh, the lockdown. Uh, that phrase which has sent shivers through us <laughs> now. Uh, and there were other challenges as well. Uh, but particularly to all, and a generous thanks for paying for the wine tonight, which is uh, <laughs> it's good to have a daughter like that. <laughs> Susan Wayne of Ashfield Press did a splendid job uh, designing the book. Um, and she set the standard for the artwork uh, being reproduced. I mean, it really is uh, uh, the highest quality. And uh, uh, Ray Lynn, uh, a name known in the publishing world or the printing world, maybe not known so much outside it, he now lives in Clare, uh, produced really a perfect book, uh, as always. And John and I uh, thank him, uh, thank them both for their work in getting this book into the stage that we felt it's ready for the world, uh, for their work, and indeed for their patients. Because, I mean, as we all know, they're involved in this kind of stuff. Uh, you can only go so far, and then the, when you hit a, a wall called COVID, or you hit a wall called a hospital, you have to stop. And uh, we got there at, at, at the end. Um, I also want to thank uh, the lad behind the camera here, uh, <laughs> Dean Kelly of Kenny's Galway uh, and Bookshop, and all the Kenny's folk. We go back a long time. Uh, it's almost 50 years now. Shudder as I say that. Uh, but it's uh, 1974, I first walked in the door of the old shop in, in High Street. Um, and as you know, their contribution to the arts in Ireland has been extraordinary. Uh, they also welcomed Revenant with open arms, um, which is, uh, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, thank Kenny's very much for that. Um, it's a special kind of book um, because it marks a return uh, for both John and myself to collaborate as he's been talking uh, 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 about. Um, it's a collaboration which is an artistic job, but it has a very distinct end in sight. Um, for Revenant, uh, the book and the images, the prints behind me, will raise funds for cancer research. Um, the story behind the book, uh, uh, you'll find in the book's preface, so I don't want to repeat the details here. But if you bear with me for just a minute or two, uh, I'd like to read just two poems, short, uh, uh, from the book, just by way of saying thanks to all those who made the book happen, but also to thank you all for coming along this evening and making Bloomsday here with us in Kenny's again, uh, a great uh, moment for us, and indeed to welcome publicly the publication of Revenant. Uh, there are two lines that run through the book. I'm only going to read you one of each. As you can see, it's a short piece of work. Um, the start of it began with a poem um, about my father, whom I didn't know. Um, but uh, uh, when he died, a, a file of his photographs was passed on to my sister and then from my sister to me. Uh, and in this little file I discovered photographs of the family history, and, but also a photograph of himself, which I find uh, uh, an interesting photograph. He also had kept cuttings and so on about myself and our daughter Alwyn and others uh, of the family in this file. So he'd been sort of like uh, monitoring a life uh, parallel to his own. So. This poem was written before the idea of the book came, but it's the kind of key, the spark to the book. Only Son, Gordon Aubrey Daw, 1923 to 2015. How strange to learn 
you kept an eye on my unpredictable journey. Were the cuttings stored safely away or kept to hand in the living room beside TV and fire? Staged photographs from the West, anonymous backdrops, your only son awkward as ever before the camera. I have one of you in return, looking the very best, hands in embrace, the sunlit beaming face. So that was the kind of start of the sort of the line that this book followed along. Um, and uh, having gone through this, uh, this medical condition uh, of, of cancer and chemo and all that, one of the things that uh, intrigued me was that uh, one of the places where I, where, where, where I was situated in, Vincent's Hospital, I could hear that of the golf being played <laughs> outside. Uh, and I thought, well, life goes on. Uh, it was like an updike or something, you know. I could see this chap going, oh, well, that's all. You, you, you just barely hear them com communicating to one another. So I was sitting up there, uh, uh, as you'll hear, and um, uh, this poem came to me. Um, uh, you know that sort of, uh, uh, the phrase that we use in Ireland, keeping body and soul together, it sort of mm. stuck with me and it became uh, the poem, Body and Soul. Now there is a technical term in here called pick line, uh, which is a kind of a, 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 a medical technical device for delivering uh, directly into your body. A chemo, chemo, uh, uh, and it, it bypasses, you know, uh, a lot of the fiddling that goes on when they try and put the stuff in uh, on a on a, a bi bi weekly basis. But for me, pick line made me think of ships. I, I grew up in Belfast, not too far away from the harbour, and I always see the line along the side of a ship, you know, a liner or a, 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 a transporter. Uh, you know, you'd see the numbers going down in this line, and I kept on thinking about pick line as being something part of that. Anyway, so this, this became the poem, and uh, uh, I'll read it to you. Body and Soul. And how are we doing here? Doing well. Over her shoulder, the customary crane stands stock still. My magic silver juice gleams in the sunlight of a mountain stream. Raindrops, one at a time. As it delivers its priceless cargo, the pick line makes me think of a bayou in the deep south, spreading out into quieter streams and tributaries, like the workings of heart and lungs all the waterways of arteries and veins that keep the body and soul together. I hear how radio waves only go in one direction, so the bend in my approach to the dusky theatre is a protection of sorts. Lie still and heavy, stare lovingly at the ceiling, best not shuffle your feet. When I enter the dream machine, that reads me front and back. It feels like forever, but then, in its own way, I am released. And dutifully, it withdraws into itself, a strange beast, silent, but patiently waiting to be summoned again into life. Mm -hmm. That's it. Except there's more Baldwin's wine. So. <laughs> Don't be a bit shy. Thank you for your attention. And for anyone who hasn't had the book, uh, you can have it signed here. That's, that's